Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today I'm gonna to try and answer a viewer's question about interviewing for biomed jobs. And I've kind of covered this topic before, but I didn't go into too much detail. There is a process and there's a process that you guys should know and get used to because the better you are at this process, the more likely you're gonna get the job. And I'll start right off, guys, and I'll tell you that I deeply apologize. I normally produce better quality videos and more videos, but the last two weeks, three weeks, I've been undergoing some very, very crazy things at work. I gotta limit what I can tell you guys because of legal reasons and because of, uh, because my counsel has advised me not to really talk about it, especially with people at work. But uh, I can tell you that um, I am no longer a team leader in charge of operating rooms at my hospital because they moved me. And they moved me probably as a punishment uh, because I whistle blew on some stuff that was not happening correctly. And it pissed off a bunch of people. But uh, guys, something's wrong. I, I'll tell you and I'll tell you a hundred times over. You got to stand up for it. And that includes people that you work with. If they tell you no and you know that they're wrong, take it up a notch. Always take it up a notch. And take it to the next level because some things are just not worth it. I'll, I'll sacrifice my whole job. I, I'll tell you right now. My career, I'll sacrifice my job today. Uh, and I'll, I'll worry about it later in court. Um, that's just the way it's going to be. And I, it was, it was a very, very stressful and very sad time. Um, in fact, I've got a, a, all my tools over here. You, you guys see my video about my tools at work. My tools are over here. My, my roll away tool cabinets back over there. But, uh, that's all right. Cause that was a lot of stress. It was a lot of stress. And, uh, I'm, I'm a, just naturally an optimistic person. So, you know, you take me out of the operating rooms, you're going to figure it out real quick that <laughs> all the stuff that I did. But anyway, getting back to the story, let's go over interviewing for biomed jobs because like I said, there's a process. Okay. So let's start right out. There's going to be application. Now I've told you guys in videos before indeed monster.com amy.com. Yeah, those are going to be the areas that you're going to look for for biomed jobs. But here's one that you didn't even think about. Often jobs will be posted at the hospital itself and not um, on jobs like monster.com or whatever. I have found jobs that are basically unlisted for God only knows what reason, but it wasn't listed. And uh, you go to the job itself and you, uh, you know, you do a search for clinical engineer, biomed, BMET, whatever. And, um, you know, you can find it in reverse that way. <laughs> it happens when you apply for jobs, uh, you are going to be filling out an application on the hospital's database. And that means you're going to have to create an account on the database and the account process takes forever. It takes so long. And you have to do it for every hospital that you want to work for. So I hope you don't want to work for that many hospitals. Oh, luckily, some of the hospitals are large chain hospitals. And when you work for them, you create an account once and you apply for those jobs elsewhere in the country, in the region, whatever. And you still have an account someplace that has like your resume and all that stuff preloaded. So all those accounts, they want you to upload a resume. Sometimes they magically create an online profile for you. Usually they don't. Usually what you have to do is you have to go through and type in the exact same thing that's in your resume. And the longer your resume is, the bigger a pain in the butt it is. Because all your educations you have to preload, all the places you've worked for, you have to preload all your job titles and all that. Oh my gosh. Your licensure, all that you have to upload for every hospital that you want to work for, which can be a lot. So that's just step one, the application process. Now, part of the application process might be a personality test. 
and that's the uh, bunch of questions to figure out if you're lying to them and to figure out if you're crazy. Simple enough, right? Personality test. Um, then HR will eventually call you to schedule an interview if you make it to round two. Now this process can take between two days and two months. It's completely random and you're probably not going to get contact back at all. They call that ghosting when they just not even like a to heck with you email. It's you don't even get that. Some places don't even give you the sir the, the courtesy of saying sorry, we have another candidate. No. Often they'll ghost you. You'll never hear from them again. Live with it. It's part of just the way it is and and maybe you don't want to work for a hospital that does business that way anyway. Note to you hospitals, if you ghost people, shame on you. And you, you could be missing out on some really good talent. So the next, HR is going to call you to schedule an interview. Make sure you are there and make sure you're on time. And if it's a remote interview, like Zoom, check it. Check your Zoom link like a half hour before. You know, it'll say, hey, a waiting meeting or whatever. But check your link to make sure it's valid because if not, then you at least have some sort of time to contact your HR person back and say, hey, it's not working. Be punctual. So your preliminary interview. This is going to be an interview interview usually with somebody like the director. It's going to be somebody with a lot of pull. Don't waste their time. All right. And uh, he's going to go over stuff like, what have you studied? He wants to know your background, areas of interest. He's going to go over that, guaranteed. Uh, previous experience, they're going to go over that. Um, and part of previous experience is they're going to want to know why you left your previous job. And they're always going to ask you that one question. Tell me a situation where you were in a tough place and how you got out of it. They're always going to ask you that question, guaranteed. So and know, know your answer, just like why you left your last job. They're going to ask you that. So. You better have an answer and it better be a darn good one because we don't like people that leave other jobs even though you know i would say easily more than half the biomed jobs out there are less than desirable and that's just because they don't offer training or let's say it was going to be a dead-end job like biomed one you got 10 years as a biomed one trust me i've seen it where it can happen i know people have been a biomed one for like 20 years at certain places because there's no room for growth it happens it happens often Especially when you get to that Biomed 3 and you're ready to take the next step. I'll tell you right now, you're going to have to go from hospital to hospital to find the right one. Because a team lead at one hospital or a Biomed supervisor or whatever is going to be completely different from hospital to hospital. So uh, you must have an answer for that. Why did you leave your last job? All right. So prep for that. Prep for your interview. These are common, common interview questions. So research them. I've got them at every single place I've been at. You should already have an answer in your head because just tell the truth. Tell them, what, tell them what really is going on. So after that, they're probably going to schedule you a second interview. Your second interview. Now, this one is usually going to be usually a group of people. It's almost never like just one person. My first interview is usually one person. My second interview is almost always multiple people. And these are going to be people like your your director, your biomed manager, and or your future team lead. And they're going to go over situational questions like this device in this type of environment. You know, what would you do in this case, in this scenario? They're, they're going to go over questions like that. They're going to go over interpersonal questions. Okay, here's where they're really trying to nail you down as a candidate. They're going to go over like your family life. They're going to ask you like, so you married, you got kids, because what they're trying to figure out is, are you the type of person that never wants to do overtime? Do you not want to travel during your job? So those are all questions like, because as I said in other videos, on call is going to be part of the job. Travel is probably for a large percentage of the jobs out there. It's going to be a requirement, a prerequisite. So you're going to have to travel and they're going to try and get these interpersonal questions out there so they can figure out what type of family life you have. To figure out if you're going to be the person that they want traveling around the country, around the state, around the vicinity, from from destination to destination, to find out if you're trainable, because some trainings take a long time, so you're going to be gone for a while, and uh, this is where they're going to try and hash that out. 
and they're also going to ask you about your goals. Almost every time you get to the second interview, they're now really digging in about your goals because you are one of the finalists. If you get to a second interview, you're one of the finalists, all right? Not necessarily going to get the job, but the, the chance of you getting the job compared to all the other garbage resumes is very likely, okay? So be prepared for your second interview. Be punctual. And also, you need to study up on yourself. I mean, you should know yourself anyway, but you need to know that piece of paper, okay? And by the time you get to your second interview, do your research. If, if you get through your first interview and it went well, start doing your research on the people at your hospital, the size of your hospital. You should know, like, some of the some of the workers there. I find this type of stuff out through LinkedIn. If you research biomed slash whatever hospital, you can find people on LinkedIn. Try and figure out the team work, uh, you know, the team structure and try and figure out, like, new developments at the hospital, like new wings that they're building and stuff like that because it's going to affect you, all right? So that's your second interview. I have had up to five interviews for biomed jobs before, okay? And I'm gonna cut this list off at three because your third interview usually happens right immediately after your second interview. It's, it's usually pretty quick, if not the same exact day. And your third interview is gonna be your biomed manager and or your team slash peer interview, okay? Sometimes it's those guys together. Your director is no longer part of the picture. And now it's just your manager and, and your team or just your team. And your third interview, they're probably going to ask you questions that they're not legally supposed to ask you. They're, they're just really trying to figure out who you are as a person. It's okay at that point to joke around a little bit and, and just enjoy the experience. 90% of the jobs you apply for, you are not going to get. Enjoy it and learn from the experience. Ask them questions. That's a really good spot for this right here. When you get to the second interview, to the third interview, start asking them questions. Be prepared. Be like, where do you guys see the department in a couple years? Ask them, like, what's your projected biomed growth? What's your on-call like? Like, this is your chance to really get those questions out there. What type of database system do you guys use? <laughs> you guys know I'm big on that one. Um, this, this is the time. Your third interview, sell it, all right? Now, obviously, your biomed manager and or director, if you get to your second or third interview, you're already a finalist. There's a pretty good idea. You, you would have to really mess it up, like not be punctual or something like that, and they'll cross you off the list. But if you get that third interview, you're almost certainly the person that they're looking for. Don't mess it up. It's more like an introduction to you and the team and so that they know what's going to happen. And that's when they're going to start asking you stuff like, when do you think you can really start? They're going to ask you that because they're trying to figure out, you know, their overlap. If somebody's retiring, they're going to try and, and figure out uh, about shipping uh, your goods because a lot of places will pay for relocation expenses, especially when you get above like Biomed 2. Uh, if you're a Biomed 3, Biomed Specialist, something like that, it's going to be part of the bargaining is is like uh, relocation expenses. So that's that's something for you guys to know. After your third interview or your second interview, you're going to get an HR callback. And this could take one week to two months later. I've been everywhere in between. You think like, oh, there's no way they want me anymore. And they call you like two months after the fact. And you're like, what is going on, guys? I've, I, and I've interviewed for a whole hospital from, from step one to step five. And I got the job. And you are just now at step five. And you're just calling me back saying you'd like to set up. Uh, a start date guys some hospitals are really bad so just just guys understand this is not a quick process for almost any hospital now as soon as I got out of the military that was a quick process and that's why I chose that particular hospital because within three days I was sitting in front of people answering questions and I was meeting my team within three days okay that was that hospital liked to move fast and they're very professional and I dig that guys so your HR callback this is when they're going to start your final stuff, okay? They're going to want to know when you can start. They're, that, they're going to know uh, about your relocation expenses. This is also when you start debating about pay, okay? Because they're, they're going to send you an offer or make you an offer over the phone before they send you a paper offer. And this is when you are going to bargain over your pay. Now, if you're just a general biomed, don't go overzealous on bargaining for your pay. 
okay? But if you have special training, if you're a highly motivated person or whatnot, by all means, get what you can get. But know that your market value. In some places, the more that you market yourself, the more they're going to expect out of you, okay? And and you will get quickly overwhelmed. So remember that too. If you ask for that extra 5K in your salary, I'll tell you what. Some places they're going to stack the workload up on you just to test you out. And uh, just be aware of it, okay? So the HR callback, they're going to do a personality test. It's either they do it at the beginning or they do it at the end. I've, I've Usually it's at the end, but whatever. They're also going to schedule a drug test. They're going to go over your immunizations. You're going to meet with their um, their nursing staff, and they're going to go over your immunization records. Have them, keep them, know them, okay? Um, and here is also where they're probably going to issue you pre-employment training or computer-based training, okay? They're going to give you a login to their database so you can get your CBTs or computer-based training, get it knocked out before you set foot on their campus, okay? So that's, that's going to be one of the last things. And then they're going to set up your in-processing, okay? So guys, that is the process for getting a biomed job in a nutshell. Every hospital is different. Be aware of that. Hey, bud. All right. See, I knew I was going to get some, some visitors. So guys, that is the process for getting a biomed job. It's not fast by any means. Just be punctual. And as soon as they ask for documentation at any level, have it ready. Have it PDF form ready to email back to them. Now that means your training documents, I have all mine scanned in in a PDF. I have my um, like my birth, uh, my birth record, I have my social security card, and I have a, a whole bunch of stuff like my DD-214, you veterans out there, make sure you have those, those scanned in in PDF form. I keep mine on Google Drive so I can just send them to whoever I need to make stuff happen fast, okay? Be professional, have them you know, be the ones that you're waiting on. Don't don't have them waiting on you, all right? So always be proactive. I get stuff to people within probably 30 minutes of them asking for it, all right? Because always, always have a positive outlook and be proactive, okay? All right, guys, you can tell somebody wants to play. I just got home. Good luck, guys. And uh, those jobs are starting to really open up out there. <laughs> I see you in the camera, you goofball. Good luck and uh, enjoy this career field, guys. If you have any questions, please leave them for me down below. I'm going to get to almost every single one of them, whatever I can. And uh, guys, I haven't asked this for in a while. If you like these kind of videos, please subscribe to this channel because this is what tells YouTube that you like this kind of content. And it really helps me. It helps the channel out. It helps other people find channels like this so that we can make this knowledge <laughs> so my stupid dog so we can make this knowledge plentiful for everybody because there's not so much information on the interwebs about biomeds and you guys deserve to know what this career field is really like before you really get involved okay good luck guys thanks for watching bye <laughs>